Okay, your assignment for this week is called Choose Your Own Art Form. So I'm going to go over the directions and then I'm going to give you a little more direction and guidance as to how you'll get started on this. So for this assignment, you will research an art form that you think is really cool. If you prefer to do art, then you can try this art form. And if you prefer to write, then you can do a presentation on this art form. The best part is you get to choose. So here are some of the options that were listed in your directions. Drawing with charcoal, ice sculpting, wood carving, portrait drawing, pinch pots, linear perspective drawing, acrylic painting, watercolor painting, calligraphy, pen and ink drawing, woodblock printing, potato printing, yes that's a real thing, anime, um, and you could do drawing or painting, collage, landscape painting or drawing, photography, and there's all different kinds and here are some um, some different categories of photography. I would like for you to focus on just one of those, please. So portrait is always of a person. Landscape is of nature. Fashion, that's pretty self-explanatory. Sports, um, yes, there are people who make their whole living just doing photography of sports events. And then abstract. Okay, um, then also you have abstract painting, mixed media. Mixed media is just when you combine different kinds of art techniques. So let's say you um, have a painting that you then drew on, and then you added some um, collaged magazine pictures. Okay, mixed media just means um, more than one art technique altogether. And then installation art is where you actually install art into a building. So that one, um, there's a couple of these that you would not really be able to do yourselves, like ice sculpting, that would be pretty difficult to find a giant block of ice and get the tools to do that. Um, same with installation art. Uh, wood carving, if you did something like that, please make sure that you um, talk to your parents about that first. Um, the rest of those, pretty much you can just kind of um, you're going to do a little research on it to see if you'd like to try it and see if you can get the materials to try it. Okay. Okay. If there is an art form that is not listed that you would like to explore, do it. Okay. So if there's an art project that you've always wanted to try or, um, you know, anything to do with art or creating things that you've always wanted to try, please go ahead. Just make sure that you get all the requirements in there, okay? So you will want to check out websites, YouTube videos, articles, blogs, everything. If you want to try this form of art, you will create something at home. Then take some pictures of your work, then add them to a Word document. You will write a little bit about what you learned while you tried this process and describe how you did it. You can also share some of what you learned in your initial research too. So what that means is um, when you are, maybe you found a really cool YouTube video showing you how to do this, then you would want to share that YouTube video um, and maybe give me the link in the Word document. Or if you found a really cool website on it, or if you found um, kind of listed instructions in a blog, whatever you find, that is where you will share with me what you found. Okay, and then lastly, explain why you chose this, what you found interesting about it, and if you would want to try it again. Okay, so if you choose to do art and create some kind of um, art project or a drawing or a painting or whatever you choose to do, you're not done yet. Okay, you, you do need to do a little bit of writing as well. Okay, if you want to learn more about the art form, you will do as much searching as you can. You will create a PowerPoint presentation or a Prezi to share what you learn. Please include many images of the art, artists who make this form of art, where it's displayed, like galleries or museums, if there is a certain part of the world where this is made, what supplies you need for this art, and anything else you want to include. As always, you will not copy and paste any information from the internet. 
You will use your own words to relay the information that you learned. Make sure that you use the first slide to introduce the art form that you chose and what it is. Okay, so um, if you're going to do a presentation, you do have to use information that you find online. You can't just say, oh, well, I think I'm going to do um, portrait drawing, and I know that you need a pencil and paper, um, so I'm just going to write that. And then I'm sure there's portrait drawings up at a museum, so I'm just going to say, um, I'm just going to say that. So you actually have to do some research and find out some things that you didn't know before. Okay. Um, and as always, if you're doing any kind of research for school, you need to say where you found your information. Okay. So uh, both of these, whether you do art or you do a presentation, these will both be worth 50 points. Remember, I would rather see too much information in pictures than not enough information on pictures. Okay, so include as much as you possibly can. Okay, so let's pretend that you have chosen potato printing. Um, you've never heard of that. Sounds like something you may want to try and you actually have potatoes just sitting right in your kitchen. So we are going to type in potato printing and see what we get. So first you can look at images for potato printing. Okay, and you can kind of get an idea. It looks like people have carved out halves of potatoes and then you dip them in paint and then you push them onto paper. You scroll down, you can see lots of them. This would actually be considered um, mixed media because not only did they use potato prints, but then they also added arms and eyes they drew on top of it and then added something. Okay, so you could do potato printing where after it's dry, you can actually add things. You can draw things on there. Here's a cool Batman one. Okay, so let's go back to all. You can see Martha Stewart has some potato prints. So let's go to her website and see what Martha Stewart has to say about this. Okay, we don't want to see that. Continue to cite. Okay. So this actually has very specific directions. Get rid of all the ads very specific directions on how to do potato prints. Okay, right here. So, and it gives you a list of, of things that you might need. Um, this one has, is where you do it on a shirt. You don't have to do it on a shirt. So if you come back up, we'll go back. We'll see what else there is. So, Easy Crafts for Kids. DIY stands for do-it-yourself. Oh, and this actually has you making a uh, gift wrap. So like wrapping paper. Um, here we have a YouTube video. So I'm going to show you. You can actually um, just go to YouTube and type in potato printing in YouTube. And then look at all of these videos as well, showing you how to do it and giving you different ideas. Okay. Okay, so let's, let's go back to Google. Now we're going to pretend um, that we want to do a presentation on maybe sports photography. Okay. Whoops. So we're going to do, if you just go to Sports Photography Denver, here's even a Youth Sports Photography Network. I wonder what that's all about. Oh, this would be like um, taking photos of um, 
like young people's athletic groups like that. So that might not be so interesting actually. So let's Denver sports photographer. Let's check out an actual photographer's website. Okay. So this guy's name is Kevin Thompson and it looks like he's a professional sports photographer. And you can actually look through some of his photography. Okay, so you might be able to include him in your presentation with some of his own photography. Okay, what if we wanted to look up just sports photography without the Denver? And maybe we could look up sports photography jobs. Okay. Oh, this would be interesting. Getting hired. What Sports Illustrated looks for in a sports photographer. Okay, that would give you some good information about that. And then you can even go to, well, let's get rid of the jobs. And, but this time, oh, come on. Well, I'll hit enter and then we'll, but we'll go to images. There we go. Okay, and maybe let's say you really like this one. Let's click on it and then click on the website and we'll see where that came from. Okay, well, it looks like this is another professional sports photographer and the name of this site is Corbus Crave. So then you can kind of flip through and see some of his work. Okay. And then if you find a certain, here, let's go back to home. Let's look up sports, whoops, photographer. Let's see who, oh, cool. There's even a Wikipedia about it. Let's say this guy's name is Michael Clark. So you can go to his website so not only would you be able to see some of the photos that this person has taken, you can also learn more about him, sorry. <laughs> you go to bio, then you can learn more about him and um, like probably how he became a photographer and all that kind of stuff. So that is a good thing that you could include in your report too. Okay, you guys, that is it. Um, so I hope that I've given you some good ideas on how to go about your research. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions and have fun with this.